Hi lovelies, welcome back. Today it's another favourites video. So I've got makeup to share with you, I've got fragrance, I've got footwear and I've got my book. I found my black eyeliner, my matte black liquid eyeliner. I didn't even need to wait for something to come through the post, it was already in my collection. This is the liquid eyeliner by Tanya Burr Cosmetics. I'm wearing it today. This is a liquid eyeliner that dries matte. I've been looking for one of those for ages and you know like when you just kind of drift and meander, especially if you get a lot of makeup and you forget what exactly you have. Well, that happened to me. Um, and then I stumbled upon this uh, sort of midway through the month. I just think it makes such a big difference when you get real black, proper black eyeliner. It's way more flattering than, you know, like a dark gray. Okay, next, I'm just trying to think of what to show you. Ah, okay, beauty device. I rediscovered my body shop. I don't even know what this is called, massaging tool. I'll link all of this in the description box, actually, if you want to know what the technical term is. We're going to call this massaging tool. I came across this, I was reorganizing my uh, skincare and my makeup and stuff and came, I mean, it's, it's a long and lengthy process, but it's quite exciting because you discover old gems. I've just bought foundation all over this. I came across this, I tried it straight away, like I had some skincare to hand and I was like, oh, this actually feels really, really good. It seems to just target, I mean, I go in, admittedly, you probably shouldn't do this but I do use quite a bit of force because I like to target pressure points in the face I find it really relaxing and um, sort of therapeutic I find that it sort of releases any tension that I've got uh, like in my head it just helps to I just love facial massage and you guys know I'm into skincare as well so using this has been a really fun thing to do um, as part of my skincare routine so I just use this on top of my creams and it's just so lovely it's just a, a nice treat I love little gadgets see gadgets don't have to be complex Okay, no, the complex ones are really fun too, but sometimes you want to go to, back to the basics. You want to use a manual thing. This was my favourite scent for ages, and then I kind of drifted away. Started wearing quite a few Jo Malone scents, and then I, my heart drew me to my Coco Mademoiselle Chanel perfume. Love this. Love this so much. I have so many good memories um, attached to this fragrance. It's such a... The memories are flooding back extremely feminine it's just such a lovely gorgeous deep scent it's not too floral it's not like kind of wooden oud fied a little bit sweet but not like fruit sickly sweet it's just a very classy sweet it's just very chanel i've literally been wearing this every time i've reached for a fragrance this month walking out of the house it's just i used to save it for special occasions and then i was like forget it every day is a special day and i'm in as well so this, this is it. This just, I mean, how good of a gift would this make if you were to, I mean, I bought it for myself, but Hubsy, had you bought this? He's bought me other fragrances, but this one, I just don't think that you would have thought I would like this because it's not really the kind of fragrance I normally go for or had been going for. But yeah, this has just become my, just my signature scent for everywhere I go and everyone comments on it. Every time I hug, because I'm a hugger. Are you okay, baby? Yes, I'm smelling Oh, you're breathing. You, you're smelling the, the okay. I thought you were getting tired. I thought you were like giving me a deep breath, like, oh, mama, I'm glad you like it. Um, yeah, every time I kind of go to hug, because I, I am a bit of a hugger, I tend to kind of ask first though, okay? I'm not one of those that like imposes the hug onto somebody. I kind of gauge who that person is in their body language. But yeah, I always get the girls asking me what I'm wearing whenever I wear this fragrance in particular. So I think that's a sign of a really good perfume. Okay, I have a dupe for you. My next favorite is the Primark Matte Liquid Lipstick from their Nudes collection. Have you guys checked these out? Where was I? Foss Park, I think. Like a big shopping area and there's a Primark there and I was like, oh, everyone's been talking about Primark ripping off the KKW Nudes. I don't think it's an exact rip off. I love the concept. I just, I've been loving nude colors anyway, recently. So I was like, let me just let me just go and see because Primark or the lower end makeup um, chains can be very surprising. Their shade ranges are getting better, the formulations, the finish, the overall quality and the feel of these um, drugstore products has been getting better. It makes me wonder like who owns them. I wonder if a, a sort of a high end or a, or a brand that owns a high end makeup company is also releasing. Someone said that Bourjois is owned by a high end or is, is under the same umbrella. But anywho, I digress. I'm gonna swatch. Now I unfortunately don't know what the shade of this was. That's the downside to Primark stuff. They don't have the shade. So I'm sorry, I really can't. It was on the box. 
Um, and I put it up on my Insta story back when I got it, but I didn't expect for it to be a favorite, so I just didn't even think to make a note of it. So that's that. Okay. Can you guys see? I don't know whether a swatch is sufficient, but I can tell you the quality is really, really good. It's a really nice um, sort of a peachy nude color. Not orange, but more on the orangey peach side as opposed to like the pinky peach side of the spectrum. So if I show you, this is more of a pinky peach. This is the KKW. This was the closest shade I had. I know they're like completely different, like that's pink and that's more an orangey peach, but I hope you can see how similar the quality is just by those swatches. I find that the Primark one is slightly more watery, but I really don't mind it. I don't know whether that is the thing that's contributed to it not getting um, flaky and dry. I find that the KKW ones are quite drying on the lips, which is a huge pet peeve of mine. I mean, I still use it. <laughs> if, you know, if I really want the color, they do have a more rosy shade, but it's just not quite as pinky nude as I would like for it to be. So Primark, make more, thanks. Next, I've got shoes to show you. My trainers, my night trainers have seen a lot of use this month. They are just super duper comfortable. I wear Nike running shoes when I work out and they are just, I mean, they're like as light as a feather. You cannot feel them on your feet at all. They're so good to work out with. Um, these are not quite as light as that, but they're more, I mean, you want a more substantial sole, that's for sure, when you go out. And these are just, oh my gosh, these have been my go-to trainers. You know, like when you're just popping out of the house and you just want to quickly put something on. I've been reaching for these. A lot of you have been asking me as well, actually. So this this is what they are on my Insta stories. Um, you guys have been asking me what these trainers were. They're Nike. I'll link them for you. I'm not 100% sure. I probably should have looked this up before I started filming, but I can't remember what they're called. I'll try and find them online or or find where I got them from. If I'm wearing heels out, then I'll grab these and keep them in the car if I want to get changed later. Like they, they, they're that kind of comfortable. They're like your best buddy. Keep them in your car. When your feet hurt in the heels, put these on kind of trainers. The last makeup item is the Ardea Flawless Concealer. Now, in the past, I have told you to try the Ardea Concealer under the eyes. Love it, but I'll be completely honest with you guys. Lately, I've been more into dewy under eye concealers. This has a matte finish. So this works. I kid you not, okay? I have never used an eyeshadow base that works as well as this concealer. We marketed it as a concealer because it is that full coverage matte finish kind of thing that will sort of blot out tattoos. Like literally on the Arde page, we've shown you guys how this has the ability to blot out tattoos and stuff like that. Um, but it does have a very matte finish and that's why it works so well on the eyes. Anytime I wanna do makeup that's gonna look like extra special, I've used this as a base today on my eyes and my eyes would not have been like as, I was gonna say poppy, but they wouldn't, the color wouldn't be as vibrant or as clean and clear if I didn't use a base like this on my eyes before because my eyelids are quite pigmented. Now I use the shade one or two, this is two, on my eyes. Um, I used to use three as my concealer, like under eye concealer for the longest time. Now if I reach for number three, I do have to put a more dewy concealer over the top. Can you guys see? The pigment is awesome. It is full on and it works so well. Literally, I just put this on my eyelid. I put it under my brows as well. And if my brows are looking a little bit, um, what's the word, messy. Um, this helps to clean them up. So I take it and I sort of run it along um, my brow bone, take a concealer brush and then literally just draw with the concealer and it gives such a clean, neat finish to the brows. So if you're going for a, um, a more glamorous eye makeup look, you do need that neatness. You do need that um, sort of polished edge to your makeup or the pol a polished finish to your makeup. So this concealer comes in so handy for that. I know there's a lot of you who are like proper diehard fans of this as an actual concealer. I urge you, if you already have it, I urge you to use it as an eyeshadow base as well. Try and go a shade lighter than what you would use under your eyes. Like I said, I use three and this is two. 
um, and I usually use number one. I'm only using two because I ran out of one. We were doing a sort of sale prices for our deer the other day and should be up by now. Uh, but when we were figuring out and calculating what we can do the concealer for, I was like, do you know what? I want everyone to try this as an eyeshadow base. So it's like £2.50 on the website at the moment um, in the sale. So go and try this if you haven't already. And let me know if you have. Leave a comment and let me know how amazingly this worked for you and how it's transformed your eye makeup game. Okay, my last favorite is a book. I'm really sorry. I know I said in my last favorites um, video that I will go and get uh, at least a book that someone has recommended on that video, but I didn't end up doing that because just literally a couple of days later, I came across this book. I've been doing a lot of organizing and tidying, like I said, and I came across this book that I read last year and I was just sort of, you know, shuffling through my things, came across this book, just sort of opened it to one of the pages, started reading a bit of it and something just clicked. So I felt like I was meant to read this book or reread this book. It's The Power of Now. It's by Eckhart Tolle. I liked it when I read it, but I found that I needed to do other stuff before I could come back to this again. I find this to be more of a supplementary read in my like in my personal development journey. It clicked with me then, it clicked with me now, but in a very different way. So the book is about how you can live more in the now. It's about how we can become more present. Um, and it gives you kind of very logical, um, brain focused way to understand what it means to live in the moment. And I don't mean brain focused as in, it's like a biology book, it's not. I would say that is a, it's a book really that speaks to your spiritual side, but it's something that you have to think about and process in your head. And then you're like, oh yeah, yeah, you're right. I should, you know, I shouldn't worry about the past and I shouldn't worry about the future. And if I take those out of the equation, then I'm right here in the now and I'm present and I'm aware of my body and what's going on around me. And I can be more gr grateful. I can um, appreciate the people and the things and the situation in my life. And I can really hone in on the fact that really nothing is wrong in this very moment. So, you know, why the worry or why the stress? So yeah, it totally goes into that. But for me, when I first read it, I felt that the only thing it lacked is more of a an exploration or at least an acknowledgement. Maybe I missed that acknowledgement actually when I, when I first read it or even when I read it now. Uh, maybe it's in here somewhere, but I felt that it, it it's not really an, a criticism. Like I said, I think that by itself, the book stands just amazingly well. It's a really good read. Um, but I do feel that for me personally, I had to really explore my past. And this book kind of tells you to leave that and let it go, like let it go and just live now. Um, for me, it's been a case of of going into the past. I really believe in um, in a child therapy and I really believe in exploring your past and resolving your past and uh, really stepping into your own personal narrative of what your story is about and what you're about. And I think that the only way you can do that is to look into your past, not necessarily to form regret, but really just to process it, right? I feel that there's a lot of us who don't really grieve the things that needed to have been grieved for whatever reason, or we may be blocked inside. I do believe in, in needing to explore that part, which I have been doing on my journey. So I think at this point in my journey, coming across this book has been so helpful because it is a brilliant book. It really drills in the message of letting go of negative energy and embracing the present moment because I think it's so easy in our day-to-day -day lives to just, and I think this is one of the reasons why we find that time is just flying so quickly, to just not be aware of where we are and what we're doing and um, just being mindful of 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 our lives. Experiencing this incredible journey of life which we only get once. I'm gonna read the blurb so you get a better description of what the book's about. <laughs> Open yourself to the transforming experience of the power of now. Hugely successful and internationally best-selling author Eckhart Tolle guides us through a challenging but extraordinarily rewarding journey to find the power of now. We learn that we can find our way out of psychological pain. Authentic human power is found by surrendering to the now. The silence and space all around us is one of the keys to entering inner peace. In the now, the present moment, problems do not exist. In the now, we discover that we are already complete and perfect.
and then you know it's been endorsed by Oprah which if Oprah endorses something I am right on it who watches her Super Soul Sunday so good anywho that should make it to this favorites that's just made it to this favorites Oprah's Super Soul Sunday I love it I love people coming and just speaking from their heart and being authentic and um, speaking about life and the things that bring us together and the things that connect us just it gives me such a high. If you cannot be present, even in normal circumstances, such as when you're sitting alone in a room, walking in the woods, or listen, who walks in the woods? I would love to. Or listening to someone, uh, then you certainly won't be able to stay conscious when something goes wrong or you are faced with difficult people or situations with loss or the threat of loss. You will be taken over by a reaction, which ultimately is always some form of fear and pulled into deep unconsciousness. Like, there's quite a bit um, of this book which I the first time round, interestingly enough not quite the second time round, but the first time round I had to go back and reread. I mean it took me, although it's not a very thick book, it took me quite a while to finish because I was reflecting, rereading. So it's this kind of um, explanation which makes you stop and think and then you think, hmm, actually yeah, fear. What else happens with fear? Um, fear is linked to anger and it's linked to so many of the things that cause us to be in an agitative state, in a reactionary state, in a state where we're resistant to what's happening in the now. And I really, I genuinely believe that living your life in resistance is firstly inescapable. I believe we're created um, with the tendency to have resistance to things. I mean, it's in our biology, I mean, you know, muscles resisting each other, gravity resistance. But I think that's one of those things that is always gonna be there and we have to learn to love it and accept it as part of who we are. And when we come to terms with that and when we truly accept it, we're kind of learning to accept ourselves and every part of ourselves. Good, good and bad. You know, good and bad doesn't really exist when you enter that kind of uh, relationship with yourself. But anywho, um, so that's what it's about. Have you guys read it? If you have, then comment. Let me know what you got from this book. If you have tried any of the things that I've been talking about, if you've got anything to say on any of it, leave me a comment. I do love to interact with you guys. I love reading your comments. I know that a lot of you watch um, and don't really <laughs> interact with the videos, but you like to keep up and then you'll send me a message on another platform <laughs> saying that you've watched the video. But it would be really nice if you do leave me a comment. It helps my videos, it helps the interaction on my videos um, and the engagement on my videos. It helps me to see that someone's there and you guys are watching. Um, and it just helps to keep that two-way conversation going and I do like to read even if I don't reply to all the comments. Thanks so much for watching today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Hit that notification bell so that you are informed of future videos. Leave me a comment and I'll catch you soon in my next video. Take care. Toodles. Oh my lord. This stopped recording. Lord, give me patience flat, in my life. Flat menus. Why do you do this? This is what I need, Hubsy. My mic stopped recording. I hope you guys could hear me. Okay. Why do you do this, Mike? Why?